Publius Ventidius Bassus, Suffolk Consul 43 BCE. Publius Ventidius Bassus was one of the many new men who first made a name for himself serving under Caesar in Gaul and also during the civil wars which followed. As a child, he and his mother were taken prisoner by Pompeius Strabo and paraded through the streets of Rome in Strabo's triumph. While his specific accomplishments in Gaul and during the Civil Wars are unknown, he earned Caesar's gratitude and admiration as a capable and trustworthy subordinate. In the aftermath of Caesar's assassination, Ventidius played a waiting game while Octavian and Antony jockeyed for power. Eventually, he sided with Antony, and most likely as a result of this was appointed to one of the vacant consulships, that was the meaning of the term Suffolk Consul in the Republican period, left open by the untimely deaths of Pansa and Herdius. Ventidius does not seem to have been terribly interested in political affairs, however, as he stayed his hand during the struggle between Antony's brother Lucius and Octavian in Italy. The Parthian invasion of 40 BCE forced Antony to forge an agreement with Octavian and abandon his aggressive designs on the territories of Octavian and Lepidus in the west. After their conference at Cape Mycenum in 39 had freed Antony to respond to the Eastern Crisis, he turned to Ventidius and gave him an army with which to face Quintus Labienus and the Parthians in Asia Minor. Ventidius won such a smashing victory that the vainglorious Antony threw a celebratory feast in Athens to honor it. Having already captured and killed Labienus, Ventidius struck and defeated the regrouped Parthian force again at the Amanus Pass. The same battle compelled King Pacorus to withdraw to his home territories for a short period to regroup. When Pacorus returned to Syria with a huge host, Ventidia was there to meet him. Having studied Crassus's catastrophe at Carai fifteen years earlier, Ventidius prepared for the showdown by intensely drilling the legions under his command and by incorporating as many archers and slingers as he could recruit. Ventidius supplied Packers with false information that caused him to cross the Euphrates using an out-of-the-way ford, which extended the time that he had to complete his preparations for battle. Since the false intelligence had informed Packers that the Romans were waiting for him nearby, he and his men grew overconfident when they crossed the river and saw no signs of Roman troops or opposition. The Parthians arrived at the town of Gendaris and initially saw no Romans. When they spotted the legions waiting in order of battle in the hills, they impetuously charged after them, confident of an easy victory. The resulting battle, which is called both the Battle of Serestia and the Battle of Mount Gendaris, defied Pacorus's expectations from beginning to end. As the Parthian horse archers advanced, Ventidius's legionaries used their downhill momentum to bring on close order, hand-to-hand -hand combat which gave the Romans an insurmountable tactical advantage. Having shattered and scattered the horse archers, Ventidius rushed his legions into the encirclement of the Parthian heavy cavalry, which he had held in place and softened up by having all of his slingers and archers unload on them from above. And when you fire from above with these kind of projectile weapons, they gain extra momentum and hitting power. The legionaries identified Pacorus after the barrage and quickly cut him down. The remaining Parthian heavy cavalry tried to break out as best it could, but it did suffer heavy losses in the process. The Battle of Serestia restored Roman confidence when it came to facing the Parthians in battle. Parthia would not manage to mount a serious threat to Syria again until the reign of the Emperor Nero. Ventidius knew that Antony would jealously swoop in and seize the moment, so Ventidius contented himself with punishing those who had aided and abetted the Parthian invaders. Sensing an opportunity for a glorious eastern enterprise of conquest, Antony personally joined the army and then sent Ventidius to Rome to celebrate a triumph that he had earned. Ventidius was, at least up until the time when Plutarch wrote his life of Antony in the 2nd century CE, the only Roman to earn a triumph by fighting against the Parthians. The fact that he, and he alone, was able to achieve this points to just how difficult it was for a Roman army to corner and decisively defeat the more mobile Parthian army in a set-piece field battle. Antony's mount, Antony mounted his own eastern campaign, and his conduct of that campaign fell far short of Ventidius' performance, 
a subject that I plan to revisit when I inevitably cover Mark Antony in a full video. In fact, had it not been for the training and bravery of the legions that he dragged into Parthia, most notably the 14th Legion, which was most distinguished in covering the retreat, Anthony almost certainly would have suffered Crassus's fate. Ventidius was one of the most able field commanders of his day. Given his loyalty to Antony and his superior battlefield skills, he was to Antony what Agrippa was to Octavian. Antony's jealousy cost him the services of his best commander and thus squandered a golden opportunity for eastern glory. Presumably tired of Antony's jealousy and growing old, Ventidius disappears from the historical record after 38 BCE.